Welcome to the County of Sacramento Child Protective Services Policy and Procedure Training for Foster Care Eligibility. The purpose of this policy is to provide social workers with information on the application process and eligibility requirements for AFDC funding for out-of-home placements of children and youth in foster care. The foster care eligibility specialists review and process the foster care application and make a determination regarding eligibility for federal or state AFDC benefits. In this training, we're going to be reviewing the benefits and payments, initial eligibility requirements, voluntary placements, initial court-ordered placements, three required court-ordered findings, relative placements, and additional information and resources. Legal authority. The following federal law, WIC section, and CDSS regulations further explain the eligibility requirements to receive funding under the AFDC foster care program. Legal authority continued. As stated in CDSS Regulations 45-202.5 and 45-203.5, children are to be placed into eligible facilities. These facilities have completed safety checks and are licensed or approved for placements. Placement stability is supported by timely foster care payments, which are due by the 15th of the month following the furnishing of care, as described in CDSS Regulation 45-303.1. Accurate reporting and recording of placement start and end dates enhance internal controls to avoid overpayments and underpayments as per CDSS Regulation 45-304.111. Benefits and Payments Here are some additional benefits or payments for dependent children who are eligible for AFDC foster care. Full Scope Medi-Cal linked to AFDC foster care benefits. The initial MC-250 Medi-Cal application is done by court services clerical for each child that is detained. An infant supplement can be requested on the CS-1173, and an initial clothing allowance can also be requested on the CS-1173, available only one time per child. Dependent children who are eligible for AFDC foster care funds may also be eligible for educational travel reimbursement as well as funeral expenses up to $5,000. These can be paid for a child receiving AFDC foster care funds at the time of death. These funds can be requested on the CS-424 and must be approved by a supervisor and program manager. Initial eligibility requirements. Immediately following the initial placement into out-of-home care, the placing social worker will complete the following for each child. The CS1172 Child Removal Data Sheet, which can be found in the case section or green button of CWS CMS and must be emailed to data entry at 1173-socialworker at satcounty.net. An EA-1 emergency assistance application must be emailed to dha-foster-care-ea1 at satcounty.net. Only citizens or certain qualified aliens are eligible for federal or state AFDC foster care funds. The foster care eligibility specialist will contact the social worker for additional documentation if needed to verify alienage or citizenship status. Voluntary placements. The following additional forms are required for eligibility for voluntary placements. Please see the voluntary placement policy for information about completing these forms. The SOC 155 voluntary placement agreement is found in the CPS intranet forms. Please note that the SOC 155C form must be used if voluntary placements involve an Indian child. The SAWS 1 application for cash aid can be found in the client section or blue button of CWS CMS. SAWS 2, SAWS 2A, the CW 2.1 notice and agreement for child, spousal, and medical support, and the CW 2.1Q support questionnaire. 
Initial court-ordered placements. Court services clerical staff will compile the foster care application packet for each child that is detained and submit the packet to foster care eligibility, mail code 41-001. The packet includes petitions, endorsed copies for each child, the detention report, the signed SOC 158A on each child that is printed from CWS CMS, signed FC2 Statement of Facts Supporting Eligibility for Foster Care. This is found in the client section or blue button of CWS CMS on each child and must be created in CWS. The signed detention orders with three required court findings made in the first hearing, the detention hearing, after the child entered foster care. Three required court ordered findings. There are three required court-ordered findings which must be made at the detention hearing in order to be eligible for AFDC foster care funding. Number one, continuance in the home is contrary to the child's welfare. This order must be made in the first hearing after the child enters foster care, even if the detention hearing is continued. Number two, temporary placement and care are vested with the DCFAS pending disposition or further order of the court. Number three, Reasonable efforts have been made to prevent or eliminate the need for removal. Relative placements. The social worker making the placement shall provide the relative with the 307 Relative Caretaker Financial and Medical Assistance form, which provides information on financial and medical assistance. This form can be found on the CPS intranet in the form section. The social worker making the placement shall also direct the relative caregiver to apply for needy or non-needy relative caretaker CalWORKs benefits in the county in which the caregiver resides. CalWORKs benefits include cash aid and Medi-Cal. Relative placements continued. If the eligibility determination is that the child is federally eligible for AFDC foster care funding and the home is fully approved under RFA, the relative will receive a letter from the foster care eligibility specialist. The relative will be given a choice to continue on CalWORKs or to receive a foster care payment for the child. If the relative chooses a foster care payment, a notice of action will be sent from the foster care eligibility specialist with specific rate information. If the eligibility determination is that the child is not federally eligible for AFDC foster care funds, the relative placement is not eligible to receive an AFDC foster care payment. The relative will be sent a denial notice of action from the foster care eligibility specialist and an application for the approved relative caregiver or ARC program is sent to them. If the case is non-federal, the home is fully approved under RFA and the caregiver applies for the CalWORKs and ARC program, the caregiver will receive a rate that is equivalent to the foster care rate from a combination of funding sources. A child temporarily placed or detained with a relative or non-related extended family member per WIC Section 309 is not eligible for an AFDC foster care payment. Rule: Undocumented children placed with relatives are not eligible for AFDC foster care or CalWORKs funding, but are eligible for alternate funding sources. The social worker with primary case assignment will complete the CS 424 to request county funds to pay for placement and any immediate medical and or dental needs. For continuing eligibility for AFDC foster care funds, the court must make certain findings, including the finding that the agency has made reasonable efforts to finalize the permanent plan every six to 12 months, depending on whether the hearing is a status review hearing or a permanent plan. Please note, the court findings and orders from these hearings are sent by clerical to foster care eligibility to dha-fc-court-doc at satcounty.net. Additional information. Whenever a placement change is made, other than the initial removal, the placing social worker will complete the CS 1173 placement change form. Social workers shall document all contacts in the CWS CMS system and file copies of the completed forms in the hard file. If you have additional questions, please consult your supervisor. Supervisors, you may contact the Foster Care Program Specialist at 916-875-5078. You may also email any additional questions to CPS Policy and Procedure at satcounty.net and type foster care eligibility into the subject line.
Thank you so much for completing this online training for foster care eligibility. Make sure when you exit out to take the online quiz to make sure that you get credit for taking this training. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email cpstraining at sackcounty.net. Thank you so much and have a great day.